Good morning, everybody. I'm the Reverend Greg Botts, and you're watching me live right here on the tube. G Botts Ministries. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad. Give me a shout out for my wife, Miss Gail Botts, who's always doing a great job. Our producer. Want to say happy birthday to my uncle, the Reverend Dave Botts, down in Texas, who turned 91 years old. Walter Jones, my good friend, he had a birthday this week. Come on, let's have church. Come on, let's have church. Put your hands together. Come on. Oh. Whoa, I came to Jesus as I was. Whoa, I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. You know one thing, listen, must Jesus bear the cross alone? resting place and Jesus made me glad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get into our prayer list. Andrea, we're praying for you and we're praying for my niece, Danielle Dunn, and we're praying for Adrian. Adrian, we're praying for you. We're praying for Roger Thomas and Miss Eula Minor. We're praying for my brother, Ricky Botts, and my good friend, Arlen Potts. We're praying for uh, Kenji and Allison. Uh, we're praying for your brother, Julian. We're praying that God will raise him up. We're praying for Pastor Craig Davis down in Louisiana, Texas area. We're praying for Miss Sandra Spencer, and we're praying for Erica, uh, who's the wife of my good friend Cedric, and we're praying for Miss Mr. Greg Hollis, and we're praying for LJ and Sherelle, uh, who lost their brother, uh, Raymond Julian. We're praying for your family. We're praying for Mr. Robert Kraft, my good Carvetta Choice buddy, and we're praying for Denisha. Denisha, we're praying for you, and we're praying for Miss Jean Dupree. Let us go to the throne. Father, we come right now as humble as we know how. Father, we ask that you take all these people on this prayer list. Father, you know every name. You know every hair on their head, Father. Fix it right now, Father. Father, move right now in their behalf. Father, we know that you can. We know that you're a mighty God and a mighty God we serve. So, Father, we call on you right now, Father. Somebody needs you for one thing and somebody needs you for another. Father, bless my sister-in-law, Miss Mona, Father. Whatever she's going through, fix it right now. Shaquise, we're praying for her. 
Father, fix it, Father. Move right now, Father. Whatever it is, you can do it, Father. We ask that you touch like nobody else can, Father. Touch my entire family, my grandchildren, my daughter, Father. Father God, my sisters and brothers. Father, we know you can. Father, bless the United States of America, Father. Help us to come back together. And then, Father, we're praying for every pastor and preacher that's going to bring your word today. Father, let us preach, Father, in season and out of season. Father God, we just ask that you touch right now, Father. Father, help us to hang on to your word. Father, and then, Father, somebody's going through some other thing. Move in their behalf, Father. We don't know every name, but, Father, you know. So we ask that you fix it. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is good. I don't know about you, but I feel good this morning on this third Sunday of a new year, a year that we've never seen, a day that we've never seen. God's been good. <clears throat> Bless God. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of John. We'll be reading out the King James Version, uh, chapter 2, verses 7 through 11. That's uh, 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 chapter 2 uh, in the book of John, chapter 7 through 11. Yes, Lord. And it reads like this. Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bared it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he and he knew that not he knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doeth set forth good wine, and when men have drunk, when men have had, I'm sorry. And when men have well drunk, then which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This begin, this beginning of the miracle did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and, manif and, and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Manifested his glory and his, his disciples believed believeth on him. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. For a subject today, I'd like to share with you this. We're going to find something different in this sermon that uh, you may not have heard. We know that this is the first miracle that Jesus performed. And uh, if you go back and read a little earlier than where we started, his mother came to him and told Jesus the problem. So for a subject today, Jesus can turn it around. Jesus can turn it around. Mary came to him because that was a problem. And it was a problem because they had run out of wine. But Jesus was such a miracle worker. He made the wine, the new wine, better than the wine that they had before. And so the governor of the feast asked him, he said, wait a minute, where, where is this wine coming from? This is the good wine here. How come we didn't drink this first? See, when God do something, he works miracles and he do it well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus can turn it around. I come to tell you this morning that that problem that you're going through, Jesus can turn it around. Whatever it is, God can do it. Yeah, Jesus had gone to the wedding with his mother and the 12 disciples, and his mother came to him because they had run out of wine, and, and, and she needed Jesus to turn it around. Can you imagine being at a wedding reception, and it came down to the, the champagne toast or the the apple cider toast or whatever your preference may be. And, 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 and you ran out of champagne and, 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 and uh, apple cider before they even got to the toast. Yeah, yeah. Many of us have been to weddings and we know how that part go. But here they were uh, drinking wine and, and the wine had ran out. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus had to perform a miracle. But not only did he perform the first miracle, it, it made the disciples believe on him. They saw what God can do. They seen what the Lord can do. Have you ever seen God work miracles in somebody's life? I'm here to tell you that Jesus can turn it around. The reason I know he can turn it around is because I've seen him do it so many times. Yeah, yeah, he's worked so many miracles right here in my own family. I came to tell you, if you're depressed today, Jesus can turn it around. 
Whatever you're going through, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. Jesus can turn it around. The first in First Peter uh, five and seven tell us to cast all our cares upon Him, uh, for He knows uh, uh, what we need. He knows our cares. Cast all our cares upon Him. Jesus can turn it around. Whatever your problem is, God got it. Yeah, yeah. See, somebody's worried about money, but let me tell you, Jesus got more money than Bank of America. Jesus have more money than Chase. Jesus have more money than Wells Fargo. I come to tell you, Jesus can turn it around. Yeah, don't tell me what he can't do. Many of us were going through uh, maybe financial crisis before this pandemic. Look how God is just pouring out uh, blessings on you, stimulus checks. Yeah, yeah, somebody didn't have food to eat, the proper amount of food, and God gave uh, more food stamps to those that were in need. Not only that, the food banks are running over with food now. Jesus can turn it around. He came to that we might have life and have it more abundantly. I come to tell somebody that Jesus can turn it around. I want you to know that I'm not a super Christian, but I'm leaning. <clears throat> I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm safe and secure from all alarms. Yeah, yeah, that's, I practice that. I lean on Jesus. You need to learn to lean on, lean on him. Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. See, sometimes you're, you're so wrapped up in your problem that you can't see Jesus turning it around. Look at the situation in the United States. Look at God. All we see is how they stormed the Capitol and how they did this and how they did that. But I come to tell you, Jesus is turning it around and he ain't through. I heard somebody say, I've been running for Jesus a long time and I'm not tired yet. I'm not tired yet because I know Jesus can turn it around. Whatever my problem is, he's got it. Yeah, he can turn it around. If if you are sick and can't get well, Jesus can turn it around. If you have trouble in your mind, Jesus can turn it around. If 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 if, if you're in a situation where you lost your job and don't know where money is coming from, Jesus can turn it around. Somewhere there's a job for you. Somewhere there's a package for you. I'll come to tell you that Jesus can turn it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to lean and depend on Jesus. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Somebody asked me, how could you be so confident? How could you not worry? Aren't you worried about what's going on? And I told him, no, I'm just leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm safe and secure from all alarms. Yeah, yeah. See, the alarm, the alarm of trouble goes off in your body. The alarm of worrying goes off in your body. The alarm of finances goes off in your body. The alarm, the alarm. But I come to tell you that I know a person that can stop that alarm. His name is Jesus. Yeah, he died on the cross for your sins. Yeah, yeah. See, he, he, he hung there uh, for three days on the cross. Yeah, yeah. And the reason he died, because he needed to turn it around. Mankind was going to be lost. Our sins was like scarlet, and, and the, the commandments wasn't working. So Jesus came that he might die, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Jesus needed to turn it around. So he hung there for three long days. Yeah, yeah. The moon dripped away in blood. He hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. He was pierced in the side and he was crowned, but Jesus turned it around. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders. They tell me, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he hung there uh, for three three long days. And then when he decided to die, he hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. But that wasn't the end of the story. When Jesus died, they placed him into a borrowed tomb. Yeah, but they moved the stone because Jesus had to turn it around. Yes, sir. So when the stone was moved, Jesus walked out and he told Mary, he said, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Martha not to moan. Go get my disciples and tell them I came to turn it around. Yeah, yeah. Jesus came to turn it around. Whatever you're going through, he can turn it around. Look at this situation that every country is in right now with this pandemic. Now we have more than one vaccine. Yeah, before we had no vaccine. Now we have uh, two or three. I come to tell you, say what you want about the vaccine, but Jesus is turning it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I come to tell you 
that he's turning it around. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Jesus can turn it around. I thank God for what he's doing right now. He's turning it around. Look at somebody, touch somebody and tell them, Jesus is turning things around. Whatever you're going through, I come to tell you that Jesus can turn it around. That problem that you had that you just couldn't seem to solve. You tried and you tried. You prayed and you prayed, but just got deep involved. Once you turn it over to Jesus, God can work it out. That's what the song says. Jesus can work it out. I come to tell somebody this morning that Jesus can turn it around. Not only did he make uh, water into wine, but he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He made the blind man see. He made the lame man walk. Jesus can turn it around. And he's still working miracles today. Somebody said in another song that he's still good. Hang on in there. Don't give up. Don't get weary and well doing. God, Jesus can turn it around. Trust him, never doubt him. I come to tell you that Jesus can turn it around. You ought to touch somebody again and say, Jesus <laughs> can turn it around. I don't care what it is, Jesus can turn it around. If your burdens are heavy laden, Jesus can turn it around. If you're not, uh, if, you, if you're jobless, Jesus can turn it around. I'm going to leave that right there. I just want to tell you that again. Jesus can turn it around and he's working it out just for you. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is working it out right now. While you're, while you're looking at me on this camera, while you're looking at me on G-Box Ministry, tell somebody that Jesus is going to turn it around. That's what you need to tell them. Don't worry. God's got it. I'm going to leave that right there. I've been so thankful all this week. God has been turning some things around in my life. And I just want to say thank God for what he's doing. Hey, if you like to support this ministry, you can go to Cash App and that's G-Box Ministries, the dollar sign in front. And you can bless this ministry on Cash App. If you want to zell, uh, if you want to zell our ministry, you can go to gbox2 at verizon.net and you can zell your donation to us. If you want to correspond with us, if you're in the need of prayer or you just want to correspond, you can write to us at gbox ministries. 5762 Lincoln Avenue, number 315, Cypress, California. Don't forget to tell somebody to like us on, on YouTube and don't forget to tell somebody to subscribe. We want to thank you and may God keep you always is our prayer. Help somebody this week. God bless you. And before we leave today, if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, repeat this after me. Dear Jesus, come into my life. I'm a sinner, Father, and I come to you as humble as I know how. I know my sins is, is that scarlet, Father, but I know you can turn it around. Father, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and on the third day, you rose again with all power. I confess right now with my mouth, and Father, I believe that I'm saved. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all. We'll see you next time.